Hi, I'm Lisa Nichols, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use two different drying agents, sodium sulfate and magnesium sulfate, to remove water from an organic solution. So here I have four samples of diethyl ether. Two of them are quite dry, and two of them have significant amounts of water in them. I'm going to test the um, dry and wet samples side by side for comparison purposes. So let's start with the sodium sulfate, and I'll just set those other flasks aside for later. So you want to use a metal spatula and um, just take a small portion, about the size of a pea, and add that to each of the flasks. And then swirl it around to expose the liquid to the drying agent. And it's gonna be quite difficult to see, but what happens is when there's water in the solution, the sodium sulfate clumps with it, and that's when it forms the hydrate. On the right, when, since there wasn't any water, the particle size of the sodium sulfate state is unchanged. It remains small. On the left, with the water and the clumping, it becomes like this big mass. I know it's difficult, but can you also see that the clumpiness has stuck to the glass? That's also something that happens with the hydrate. And when it's free flowing, it does, it's not uh, hydrated. So the things that you're looking for are small particles. And so if all of it is clumped, then you want to add another portion. Give it a swirl and those clumps are still going to be there. But what you're looking for is that new portion that you added. Are those particles small? If you jiggle it around, can you see tiny particles instead of just big ones that stick to the glass? If they're loose, you know that they're not stuck and they're small, that means that it's now dry. So let's now do the same thing with the magnesium sulfate. Magnesium sulfate is going to look differently and the reason is because it's more of a powder instead of sodium sulfate being more granular. But you'll do a similar thing where you'll add a small portion, roughly the size of a pea, and add that to your flasks. Give it a swirl. And then because of the very fine particle size for the magnesium sulfate, when you swirl it and there isn't any water around, it's going to uh, float in the, in the mixture and create kind of this cloudy appearance. When it's wet, it's going to clump similarly to the sodium sulfate. And so it doesn't create as much of a cloudy part. Um, so you're basically looking for, again, a similar thing, small particles that aren't clumping. If they are clumping, then you're going to add another portion and then give it another swirl. And you're looking for that cloudy appearance because that means that the particles are fine and they are being dispersed in the mixture. And you just kind of give it some jiggles. And I think especially in the middle, you can see that there's little tiny particles that aren't stuck and they move around and they're quite small. And so that means that the water has been removed from the solution and it's dry. What you next want to do is remove the drying agent. And if you're using sodium sulfate, that large, the large particle size means that it's going to be a lot easier for you to simply pour off the liquid. Uh, but what's different about magnesium sulfate with the fine particles, you're going to have to filter it instead. So with sodium sulfate, you just pour it off. This is called decanting. You just delicately tilt it, pour off the liquid with your goal of uh, having that solid remain behind in the flask. And there's the solid residue of the drying agent. With magnesium sulfate being so fine, you're gonna have to instead filter. So you get a funnel and a filter paper, and you can do a simple fold in four. Then open it up, put that into the funnel. And then take your mixture and pour that in. This is called gravity filtration and all those little fine particles are going to get trapped in the filter paper 
and in that way you'll remove the drying agent.